वेलकम बैक व्यूअर्स सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी सेकेंड वीडियो ऑन हिपेटोलिथियास मैनेजमेंट एंड द फर्स्ट वीडियो वी हैव ऑलरेडी अपलोडेड द मेन हाईलाइट इन दिस वीडियो विल बी द क्रिएशन ऑफ एक्सेस लूप डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ एक्सेस लूप द रेलिवेंट लिटरेचर रिव्यू एंड द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द हिपेटोलिथियास रिकॉर्डिंग टू द एक्सटेंट ऑफ द स्टोन वर्डन और अकॉर्डिंग टू द सिम्टम्स लाइक टॉन्ग क्लासिफिकेशन और सोनोडा क्लासिफिकेशन एंड बट आर द एडवांटेज एंड डिसएडवांटेज ऑफ द डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ द एक्सेस लूप सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी ओनली थियोटिकल डिस्कशन एंड इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो वी विल बी uh showing the hepatolithiasis surgery that will be the excision of the extrahepatic bile duct and uh, creation of the hepatic gonostomy with excess loop that will be uh with the stomach in our case and we will discuss theoretically what are the different types of the excess loop for the benefits of the students friends uh, i hope that you have already watched our previous video that is the first part of this series and the full video is available as a free bonus content on our app and in the members only section the link for both are available in the description so please uh, do see that video before seeing this part and then you will have better understanding the etiology the clinical case scenario we have already discussed in length so that uh, it is highly desirable that you watch that video first briefly this was a case of 62 year old gentleman who has presented with acute cholangitis the grades of cholangitis we have already discussed and the same video is also free as a bonus content on our app and also on the youtube so please do check that we managed that patient conservatively with the help of antibiotics iv fluid and then we did emergency ercp stenting these are the uh, images which were showing of the extensive stone burden in the extra hepatic and intra hepatic bile duct so the concept of primary and the secondary hepatolithiasis that is when the hepatolithiasis is because of the some external obstruction in the extra hepatic bile duct we have already covered and then the this was a type 3b biliary not me that that is also covered so i will not go again into the that kind of discussion mm -hmm. friend hepatolithiasis is a very complex and i mean challenging Uh, subject or concept to understand it's a equally challenging patients these are to manage so we are trying to simplify the subject uh, the concept for the benefit of students and friends uh, my junior trainees and uh, budding surgeons who are preparing for the super specialty examinations or other examinations they will find this content very helpful because many of the mcqs are based on these questions and we have covered theory in detail we have given the relevant literature backup so you will get benefited uh, so stay tuned till the end of this video of all let's see what is the what are the different classification for hepatolithiasis friend uh, this classification is one of the simplest classification you will find and it's given uh, in the bloom card so this is by the japan research group uh, it is type 1 and type 1 e so type 1 is when there are stone only in the intra hepatic bile duct and type 1 e is when extra hepatic so stone both in the intra and extra hepatic bile duct so the patient which we have discussed the clinical scenario in the first part we are dealing with the type 1 e because he had stones both in the intra and extra hepatic duct so the, if they are duct on the right side only then we can add uh r or l according to the side of wo then lr so in our case if you remember that patient he had stone bilaterally so our uh classification for that patient will be 1e that is type 1e more intra and extra hepatic with l and r and quadrate lobe was not involved so 1e lr will be the classification for our patient the subject in hand we are discussing this is again a good classification again given in our bloom guard book by uh, takada uh, and colleagues at all in 1978 so it is according to the structure type 1 there is no apparent structure and the system is not much dilated but there are stone both in the intra and extra hepatic duct in type 2 there is a structure or narrowing at the lower end of the cbd leading to the massive dilatation of the both extra hepatic and intra hepatic bile ducts and stone formation so our patient which we have discussed had type 2 type of uh, this uh, classification type 3 is when the extra hepatic bile is normal as highlighted with the arrow and uh, there is a obstruction at the level of hilum they are bile to stone type 4 will be uh, friends when there is isolated structure in some duct like in this 
pick this type 4 will be uh, sticked in the left duct with the formation of the stones in the left duct only and type 5 will be more like a multiple structures more like a caroli type picture so there are multiple structure multiple segments so accordingly i mean the management will change and uh, that you will understand better friends just remember these facts and figures you can go through these papers also to have more understanding and just remember these will be the basis of many of your mcq questions so you have to remember these uh, classifications according to us verity there is another classification by the uh, research group from japan only so it is grade one to grade four so grade one is patient asymptomatic that will be incidental finding of the stones on imaging grade two have patient will have occasional abdominal pain grade three will patient will give history of transient jaundice or cholangitis which will settle and grade four will have a continuous jaundice sepsis or there is a complication like cholangiocarcinoma so our patient had fever jaundice which was persisting even after the erc stenting and he required three stent exchange before we could take up that patient for surgery so patient had grade 4 uh, severity or hepatolithiasis according to this research group from japan another important uh, classification by sonoda at all and uh, friends uh, these multiple classification means we don't have any one simple system to explain things so there are multiple things when we'll have one classification system which can explain all the uh, etiology and pathology then we'll have one so for the time being just remember this noda classification type 1 to type 4 again type 1 type 4 type 1 is there's no dilatation like in the uh, our previous classification type 2 there is a diffuse dilatation of intrahepatic duct without stricture there is no apparent stricture there is cystic dilatation type 3 there is a unilateral solitary or multiple cystic dilatation of intrahepatic ducts and stricture so the involvement is unilateral and type 4 is bilateral stricture formation is solitary or multiple friends so accordingly the management will change like uh, if there is no stricture then simply we can drain the segment if there is stricture then we may have to add some drainage procedure with resection so accordingly uh, the things will become clear here and we will also demonstrate in the live surgery classification friends again it is asked in many questions and then it is one of the comprehensive classification i will say so up to the e level just remember this type 1 type 2 type 1 is localized stone disease which is unilobal or bilobal so if it is localized then a patient can be offered a resection because resection has the least recurrence rate and uh, type 2 is diffuse stone disease Type 2A will be there is no atrophy of the hepatic parenchyma or structure of the intrahepatic wild ducts. So it is simply a stone burden, but there is no atrophy or structure, structure formation. Type 2B will be segmental atrophy and structure of the intrahepatic wild ducts. So there is only segmental involvement. And type 2C will be villi cirrhosis and portal hypertension. So uh, accordingly, you have to manage this patient. And if there are extrahepatic stones, so it will be EA when sphincter of aorta is normal and EB laxation of sphincter of aorta. Friends, these are a bit confusing, uh, confusing uh, classifications, but I can't help you out about these and uh, you have to just remember them. Uh, I mean, repeat, uh, see this video time and again, just uh, memorize them by heart. So you will remember the word by word content. The role of medical therapy in hepatolithiasis, friends. So, friends, I must admit one thing while I'm preparing these uh, courses and video tutorials for you guys, I am also gaining new insight because when I was going through the literature and uh, uh, this was a new addition to my knowledge also that there is role of the statin group. So, as we see, so medical therapy is only supplementary role the pca that is usually we usually um, i mean give in our setup is a hydrophilic bile acid offers liver cytoprotection and leads to accelerated activity of bile acid and bilirubin related activity of the bilirubin bile acid metabolizing enzymes and transport of proteins that increase the flow rate and decline of the bile mucinic viscosity hence there are some literature in which after prolonged use of these uh, uh, UDCA tablets up to 12 months for 12 oh, and 24 months 36 months there has been some case uh, series which have reported the dissolution of stones but uh, there are no randomized control trial and uh, in my I mean, experience we usually give this uh, tablet but the benefit is still questionable 
was a new addition to my knowledge also that there is a role of semvastatin. Uh, it reduces plasma and by biliary cholesterol levels uh, that explain the thing that primarily by reducing cholesterol synthesis. So these are given as a cardioprotective drugs and there is a reduction in CBD by lithogenicity and hydrophobicity. So by semvastatin that might be useful early stage of cholesterol gallstone development and whom a choleritic effect is required. Personally friends, I don't have uh, any personal experience of using but this rationale and the uh, basis of giving is uh, make it a reasonable choice. So uh, do give me a feedback if you have any, any one of you have used. So for the conclusion friends, just remember that we have option of pharmacological therapy in the form of UDC and semvastatin. Then we have option of resectional procedures versus drainage procedure, T-tube drainage and endoscopic versus interventional radiology that is uh, PTCL. And uh, so I mean these are different things Then in this series we also discussed about the different classification system according to the stone burden and the uh, symptoms down classification, sonoda classification and uh, different type of access loop we have discussed. So in the coming part that will be third part of the series, we will demonstrate the live surgery with creation of access to and hepatic genostomy combined with the extra hepatic bioinductor section. So stay tuned friends and if you are watching this video on YouTube, don't forget to like this content and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned. Happy learning. Thank you very much.